Hey guys, it's Ed with the third installment of our Johnny 5 build, continuing with his track drives. Lots of lathe work in this one. We have parts made of aluminum, steel, and Delrin. Let's get started. Last time you saw us make the top idler wheels. Today we'll be moving forward to the drive wheels. The only real similarity these wheels have with the top idler wheels are the discs. These were made the same way, roughed out on the plasma and finished on the VF2SS. Card here to Johnny Five's page on the NYC CNC site, where you'll be able to find loads of additional information, as well as links to all of the currently released videos for this project. For the axles on these wheels, we opted to start with this one inch keyed shaft from McMaster. This way, all I had to do was turn down the ends for the bearings and mill in a small keyway for the drive chain sprocket. Over the past couple of months, we've made a lot of little improvements to our MCO manual lathe that have made it really convenient to do quick little jobs like this. Stay tuned for an upcoming widget on this janky DRO we threw on for under 50 bucks. Now over to the 1100MX to mill in that keyway slot for the chain drive sprocket. Using a great trick I picked up here from a fellow YouTube machinist, Joe Pysensky, card here to his channel, which you should definitely subscribe to. Essentially, I'm just using this little toolmaker's vise to extend the already existing flat where I want to put the keyway, making it much easier to indicate this surface. It really isn't necessary for these keyways to be clocked to each other like I'm doing here, but I figured might as well get them as close as I can so it looks a little nicer. Next up, these aluminum hubs for the wheel discs. Also did these on the manual lathe. I've been experimenting with turning away from the chuck rather than towards it. Sometimes I find it uh, helps the chip break a little nicer and of course, a little less worry about running into the chuck if things go too far. I'll be trying that out on the slant as well. Why yes, your eyes aren't deceiving you, that is a shear hog I'm using as a boring bar. They do a pretty good job when you need something that's stout and stubby. For scribing lines in situ on the lathe, I like to put a bit of our beloved powder coat masking tape on the moving side of my calipers, then re-zero them. This will protect the part from being marred and get you within a thou or two every time. This was my first time broaching with the pneumatically actuated ram on our hydraulic press, which was mildly terrifying, so I hid behind this piece of polycarbonate greenhouse plastic that we had laying around. Might not stop high-speed steel shrapnel, but it made me feel a lot better. Anymore, I've just been using the bridge port for broaching, just by cranking the knee upward with the broach resting on a stationary point on the head casting. Here I am eyeballing the XY center of this chuck just using the taper of a TTS tool holder to get me in the ballpark, then dialing it in the rest of the way with a coax indicator. Always a bit of a pain indicating this thing and I use it a lot so I try to leave it on my machine as much as I can.
just drilling a bolt circle for the wheel discs in this op, then moving the part over to a vise so we can drill the holes for the grub screws that will secure this hub to the axle. Using a little trick that I'm pretty sure I came up with on my own, but completely sure that somebody else has been doing for years before me, taking a spare piece of keyway stock and letting the part dangle on that while we snug up the vise in order to really easily be sure that we are drilling perpendicular to the top of the keyway. Once the vise is snugged up, it can be pulled out of the way, might have to tap it a little bit, but it'll come right out. Next up, starting with a big old hunk of Delrin from Auro to make the track drive sprockets. Since this conveyor belt slash track is an off the shelf item, these sprockets are technically available, but I wasn't able to easily find any. And that's all the convincing it took for me to go ahead and make them from scratch. We do not have a lot of extra stock in the OD to work with on this part. So I threw it in the lathe to true up those saw cut faces so that it will sit nice and straight when we put it in the chuck on the mill for op one. Back over to the manual lathe to part this off and clean up that backside face. I had a little trouble getting this Delrin running true both axially and radially in this three jaw. And since axial's all that really matters, I went with that one for parting this off. Um, little weeble wobbly, but I parted it off just fine. Then mounted the sprocket on a tapered mandrel to clean up that parted face, again feeding from the center out for safety. We didn't have that DRO on here yet, and this lathe's carriage feed dial is in 1 128th of an inch, which is just awful. So I was using a dial indicator on a mag base to keep track of my travel.
and again broaching this for the keyway that will be in the axle. Delrin broach is so easily and nice you can almost push it through by hand. Now that we have everything finished up to this point, we were able to measure and very accurately make these little spacers that go between the track drive sprockets and those hubs we started off with. Not that several thou of side to side slop on this wheel would have hurt anything, but might as well make it tight as we can. Last we have these bearing cups, which hold the bearings for the drive wheel axle securely in the boomerang plates. Did these in one mil op and one really easy manual lathe op just to bring these to thickness and put a chamfer on the backside. Tape trick as always, and I'm testing out this new subplate that I made for that with these angled slots that help keep air from getting trapped when applying the bottom layer of tape. So far seems to be working great. Adaptive clearing and slotting pretty hard here with this new roughing end mill from Helical. We've been putting this tool to the test for the past couple of weeks and so far are thrilled with its performance. Not enough horsepower on this machine for two times depth, but it will handle one times depth just fine. Flood coolant is key for process reliability in order to keep heat down in the cut and keep chips clear when slotting like this. MQL systems like the Fogbuster just can't do it reliably in our experience card here for our video on slotting for more detail on this tool and slotting in general. Using triangular tabs for these slots to help keep things in place as stresses within the metal are released throughout the machining process. As thin as they are, and especially being triangular, the tabs break away easily by hand so that we can just pop these parts in the manual lathe to bring them to final thickness and add some chamfers. Commence assembly montage.
That's it for now. In the next installment, we'll be making the tension wheel and track tensioner assemblies and modifying some sprockets and making some small parts for the chain drives. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.